You know how some neighborhoods have a certain heaviness about them? Like you could feel the change in the air when you walk in or drive through. You see it in the faces of the people on their porches, almost like gravity's heavier there than other places. And it pulls what could be a smile downwards. I used to wonder what that feeling was. That unease that hums from the piss yellow colored street lights and dirty apartments. That sadness that steams up through the cracks in the sidewalks. When I was 17, I found out. It's a monster on my side of town. A creature that comes and collects everybody's hope away. It sits above the neighborhood like a heavy cloud and eats the peace from all those underneath it. I've seen it. Sounds crazy, but it came for me. At 17, it unwrapped its mile-long arms and laid them on the sidewalks I would walk down. It filled its lungs with lies and blew my classwork off my desk one day. See, it comes to everybody differently. Some mothers see their baby's bare knuckle box with bullets and they feed the monster their grief. Some boys feel desperation, cage their options into crime and the monster eats their minds away. But it didn't attack me with the death of my peers of the hunger in my belly, no. What it came for with me was my voice. See, the biggest thing the monster likes to eat is the potential of a person. Look around the neighborhood. The odds, survival rates, and sick statistics. The broken wings and boys who were taught by tough times to be cannibals. The miseducation that teaches us dysfunction. I remember learning early on that my survival only comes by somebody else's expense. And that money, drugs, and full-figured women were the keys to our influence. That our arms were brushes made to paint pictures of pain for each other. And that our frames were built to deep sea dive out of our mother's tears and into pools of blood or trips that prisons have appetites for us in their bellies and that the only way we'd seek paradise is if our bloody sidewalks had streets of gold underneath that the expiration dates the monster stamped on our foreheads couldn't be stopped that we would always be the statistics books write about so when the monster came to me it smiled showing me my grandfather's dreams dripping from its fangs it gave me two options to accept its mediocrity it said option one i could still use my voice and talents to escape this neighborhood i could make it out but with the trade off I stared into the two potholes it used for eyes. The project hallways in its mouth turned pitch black. I'll never forget the next words that echoed through its throat. Work for me, it said. Help me catch your community. Be my broken voice box and speak the things that keep me fed and keep y'all hungry. Wrap your talent round my darkness and you'll go farther than the stop signs you see. If we both escape together, then we both will reach the masses. Or option two, don't take my offer. I clip your wings. Send the cycle at you and steal your greatness. Pollute your promise in a fast food desert. Let the system snuff your voice and kill the fire you burn with. Black boys with your gift get pimped with me or by me. Say no and your barber won't even know your name. I'll burn you in a sea of poverty. Drown you in a fire of violence. Or take me as your truth and turn the pain I give to others into your profit. Either way. You and I are linked until your sad skin fades to dust. Those were its options. Tagged like graffiti to the walls of my mind. The monster stood on legs like telephone poles waiting for my answer. The rumble of my hungry belly brought smiles to its face. I looked up, thinking through my two choices. And then it hit me. Right then, I realized the monster's mistake. You lied. Its broken face became confused. What? 
I cracked a smile too, realizing the monster's trick, and I said again to it, you lied. You gave me your two choices, to kill or die. You pitch us against ourselves till we're our own worst enemies, but neighborhood. Just because you're great at being blind, it doesn't mean I have to be. No one's trapped till you convince them. And I believe there's not a smile on my block that can't be recaptured. There's a beauty you can't take away. A love your hands can't reach. See, your biggest trick is making us think there's only one or two options for us. Well, I choose option three. The monster frowned. What's that? You'll see. <laughs>